And hi, I'm retired now, but when I had not retired and had a classroom of my own, I had a set of posters that I used to put magnetically on the file cabinets that were in the back of my room. It was a set of posters I bought one time, and I haven't seen them or found them on the internet, so I'm really glad that I've got them. It's called Ancient Ways of Showing One, Ancient Ways of Showing Two, Three, and so on. It goes all the way up to Ancient Ways of Showing Ten. And I really like this because it shows how algebra came to be. It's a little strange. In the olden days, the only two ancient languages that I have any knowledge of are Greek and Hebrew. And um, I can show you that I can Greek. Let's see if I can come up to the camera there. Greek, there's an alpha, and alpha stood for one. And if you go down to the bottom for Hebrew, that's an aleph. And alpha and aleph are the first letters in each of those alphabets. So they stood for one. When it comes to two, you can see alpha, beta, beta for Greek, and beth, like Bethlehem, beth which is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, stood for two. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what will stand for three. Alpha, beta, gamma. Aleph, beta, gimel stands for three in Hebrew. So if I keep on going, you'll get the idea I'm not going to. In the olden days, there used to be a use of the same symbols. You know, sometimes you kids say, I'm trying to teach you too much. But in the olden days, they made a mistake because they tried to use the same symbols for numbers as they did for letters. And the numbers and letters, it's hard to confuse them because like if you said, if you want to say I had three cows, you'd say I have gimel cows. But gimel means camel. I mean, that's kind of crazy. I have camel cows. So Anyway, they used the same symbol for number as they did for letters. And it was the Indian people from India who first made separate symbols for letters and numbers. At least that's my understanding. And um, that turned out to be very beneficial to the development of mathematics. We have come to call them the Arabic numerals because of the trading of the Arabs across the continents, the use of those Arabic numerals that we call one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, were transmitted across the whole of North Africa. And then I, it's my understanding that Fibonacci's father was a trader over there by Spain and uh, Morocco, and that he took the idea of the Arabic numerals back to Europe with him. And that was quite a late development. I don't remember the dates. If you wanted to look up any of the, this history, you could find it on St. Andrew's site. There's a link to it from my website, howto.com, and you can find out some really interesting things about the development of mathematics. But anyway, he went back and showed it to people, and then it didn't take very long before the algebra that the Arabs had sort of developed really took off in Europe, and you had Descartes adding to it, and you had the development of modern mathematics, which brought on the Industrial Revolution, which is why you have clothes and shoes and cars and all of the things that make life a lot easier for us. We don't have to spend all our day just raising crops because we have learned the power of machines and uh, to make our life simpler. So I'm really glad that there are Arabic numerals, and but I wanted you to see that the ancients used um, the same symbols and numbers. This meant that there couldn't be any algebra because you can't have a letter stand for a mystery number when it already stands for a number. And so the lack of a separate symbols for numbers and letters is what really stopped the development of algebra in the olden times. Every All things had to just say a guess a number. They didn't have a symbol for it. Uh, sometimes students uh, don't understand. They read in the Bible and they say like the mark of the beast is 666. That's because 
In the olden days, when numbers were letters and letters were numbers, everybody's name added up. Oh, don't tell me. I don't really want to know that. I hope you didn't get that symbol. Um, we had a, another memory thing. Reminder. I think I should close off the internet when I'm talking to you. Anyway. <coughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. That's why I'm retired. <coughs> we now have numbers and symbols and we can develop algebra. And oh, I was saying about the numbers. Your, your name would add up to certain numbers uh, and there were some numbers that like the Pythagoreans thought the numbers got along like they're perfect numbers numbers like 6 and 28 whose factors add up to themselves and there was a lot of superstition about numbers and um, so you see that in some of the ancient writings because numbers added up to n names or names added up to numbers I should say so you sometimes see those references and if you didn't understand what, why they were there now you do anyway we're, I'm so glad that the Indian people developed the Arabic numerals and we can see that they gave us this powerful tool called algebra inadvertently. And um, that's what you're trying to learn. Bye.